Where's the coolest place to hear local music? How about the Botanical Gardens? We'll tell you more in just a minute. You're watching Nickel City Scene. I'm Jackie Thurn. Welcome to Western New York's only regional music showcase, Nickel City Scene. The Marine Midland Arena had their grand opening this weekend. Last night, Buffalo's own Ani DeFranco sang with the Buffalo Philharmonic. Earlier this evening, the Bared Naked Ladies and the Goo Goo Dolls played to a sold-out show. We'll bring you our interview with Robbie and Johnny next week. But tonight, we're going to check out local music at the Botanical Gardens. It's part of Co-Ecology of the Arts. You're going to see a video from Buffalo's John and Mary. Plus, we'll check in at 103.3 The Edge. Unlock the liquor cabinet. And find the right way to Thanks to Michael Cousin Kelly, we have Co-Ecology of the Arts. It's when musicians come to play, poetry is read, and the public can enjoy it all right here at the Botanical Gardens. I will not be a snack again. Oh no. You know, horses and rip my shrunken head. Oh yeah, you know, if there was another thing to do, we won't sniff blue. And now my mind is stuck in place. Oh yeah, you know, I will not be a snack again. Oh no, you know, horses and rip my shrunken head. Oh yeah, you know, if there was another thing to do, we won't. So tell me, what is Co-Ecology of the Arts? Co-Ecology co uh, of the Arts uh, supports any artistic medium brings about awareness of the heart, the soul, or the environment. And uh, we, we feel music and poetry is, speaks for the human heart and soul. So we've been a vehicle for that. We're here from September to April, every second and fourth Sunday. Cousin Kelly's really, you know, he's really for supporting, integrating different types of arts, and he has dance, he has poetry, there's sound, there's music, there's the, his sculptures, and it's, he's, he's so into it, and it's fun to be part of it because of that. We have no right to hand this child a dirty cup of water or an empty planet, and uh, that's what we're here for. We're here for the next generation. Why do you play uh, Co-Ecology of the Arts? Because I love the atmosphere, the acoustics are fantastic, and um, I, it's a, just a great time to play with the other artists of Buffalo. A great people come down here, and it's a good opportunity. And networks to your name, tons of people come down and see you, and it's good, good exposure. If you know how to snap your fingers, I just need you to snap them like this. This, I have this. This, I have this. Books, floor, bed, time, hands, hair, heart. This, I have. This, I have. 
I've been writing poetry since I was about 12, and I started performing about two years ago when I was living in Seattle, although I'm from here. And so when I came back, it wasn't really happening here yet. So I started to do it, and it's been slowly building momentum for me and for other people as well. And why do you specifically do Cole Ecology of the Arts? Because it's a beautiful place to be. <laughs> it's a good scene. I like the other musicians, and it just feel, feels like a warm, welcoming space to be. It's always a nice crowd. People walking around with their kids, and they have a good time. And so do we. It's one for all, one's for getting all you can. Cause keeps the game they're playing, and they're playing it to win. Cousin Kelly founded Coecology of the Arts. He hopes to use art and music to make people aware of the environment. They have had almost 100 events, all free to the public. When we come back, we'll have more music from the Botanical Gardens. Stay tuned to Nickel City Scene. You can ride back on that horse And you swear you're gonna make a stand They send you right down the same old course So you jump out in the sand They step right on over you And remind you it's that land In the first place In the first So tell me, how did you find out about Coecology of the Arts? Uh, well, actually, I, I play with the Fibs. Gretchen plays with the Pine Dogs, and uh, we're always at Nietzsche's, and uh, uh, Kelly being a, a Nietzsche's employee, he's always there. So he told me a couple of times, oh, you should come out to the Botanical Gardens. We're doing shows there. It sounded like sort of interesting to me. I had no idea what to expect, and I, I finally did one show, came in, and there was this trio singing three-part harmonies and the acoustics out there are so incredible. It was, uh, I said, yes, I want to do this. I got some great videotapes of us playing here and uh, try to convince all my friends back home that this is what all the bars in Buffalo look like. So. <laughs> The space in here is really inspiring. It's uh, just wonderful to play in and among the trees. That smells great in here. It's clean air. Uh, you know, seems the music is more beautiful as a result. Events do you sponsor? We have um, we have uh, coffee houses in Allentown. We have um, open mics on Monday night, and uh, we have art shows. It's uh, usually on donations or for free. They're they're always for free at the botanical, 
and what a beautiful place to come to. Uh, what else speaks the rainforest better than here? Buffalo has its own rainforest voice uh, in the botanical. Why do you do it? Um, do you get paid to do this? Oh, why? Do other people get paid? <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> no, no, definitely not. I don't think I would want to. It's just fun to come out here and get a new, different surrounding, better than a bar, and it's not smoke-filled or anything. It's just a nice atmosphere. Uh, it's, it's, it's a labor of love, and it does. Like you said, it sounds so good in here. Yeah. It's, it's really enjoyable just to sing in a room that has such good acoustics. And How did you get the bands to come? Out of sincerity. Total sincerity. They, they do it out of their heart. I'm not a stranger. College of the Arts has put on over 50 shows at the Botanical Gardens. Their next show will be tomorrow afternoon from 1 to 4.30 p.m. Cottonmouth, Pam Ryder, Tom Fenton, Gretchen Schultz, and many others will be performing. Cousin Kelly also shows his love for the environment in his sculptures. He finds driftwood to carve and would never cut down a living tree. You can see Cousin Kelly's work at Nietzsche's, Tapa Cafe, Java Temple, and in many Allentown shops. When we come back, we'll check in at 103.3 The Edge. Over the Edge is next on the scene. It's Kid Missile from 103.3 The Edge, and I'm standing in front of the 464 Franklin Street, otherwise known as our Edge Studios. And for now, seven, eight months or so, I have been known as the new girl. I've been low man on the totem pole, so finally, we have a new worker. So I get to move up a notch here. Um, his name is Brad, otherwise known as New Boy. We're working on the title, but um, he's got lots of duties, one of which is night, on-air personality, seven to midnight. So let's check in with Brad, why don't we? Yo, Brad, drop it! So uh, this is one of Brad's duties here. Hi, Brad. Say hi, hi to Brad. I have seven to midnight and uh, lawn maintenance. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's go. Uh, let's go interview you. Okay, Shall cool. we get to know a little more about Brad inside? Yeah, finish up. Let's go. You finish up. Uh, Brad, maybe here. Six four four nine Edge. It is a very very cool Thursday. I have tickets to see Marilyn Manson to give away. I have tickets to see Paul Westerberg to give away. And I do believe I'll be playing a double-edged set of the hip, which means I'll be giving away hip tickets as well. Look at that. They all think they won something. Let's see here. Yep. Anyway, this is Brad. Brad, why don't you tell us a little about yourself. Where are you from? Have you ever worked in radio before? Uh, well, I'm from West Seneca. I did a little stint at uh, Buff hmm. State, WBNY, okay. for about four years. Uh, for the last uh, three years, I like to think I was on vacation. Oh, so, okay. Uh, and then I uh, just put a tape together, sent it over here to the edge. Uh, Rich Wall hated it. So, I uh, burned it. I tried to burn yeah. the thing. I tried to put it in the garbage, but you know, with his garbage skills, he picks everything up. So I put together another tape, and they dug it. Yeah, but there's one last thing, you know, we didn't put you through the test yet. Which is? Which makes you know whether or not you can have the job. The Battle of the Nun, ah. all right? You must battle the nun. Ready? Well, I think I got the nun beat. <laughs> so now, who's your favorite cartoon character? Oh, Wiley Coyote. Okay, why? Uh, why? Because he's a super genius. He's a super genius? That's all you can come up with? <laughs> well, yeah, I like to consider myself a super genius. Oh, okay. What? <laughs> oh, I'm not a super genius? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. What's up with those glasses? These are the Buddy Holly model. BC glasses. What BC? It's a military expression. Well, meaning what? Uh, it's really stupid birth control. But I enjoy these glasses. These glasses have given me hours and hours of very nice eyesight. And that's what counts. That's important for talking. Good eyesight is really important to have a nice radio show. Well, I'm going to see the buttons I press. <laughs> you know. Do you ever want to be in a band before? 
Uh, I've tried my hand at a band, and it usually ends up in fist fights and creative differences. So. What did you play? Nothing. Nothing? Well, I used to play the garbage cans. <laughs> He's a lunatic. He's crazy. Insane. Cuckoo. I'll try and play the garbage cans. <laughs> Why maybe? Why not, like, positively or... or... Perhaps. It was going to be Brad, perhaps. Well, then why maybe? Tell us that. Uh, there's a long, drawn-out story. Well, give us the short version, then. No, I really couldn't, because I'd have to use the F word and things like that. Oh, that's not good. So. I don't think we can do that. Yeah. Are you still recording? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. He's still recording. Um, Brad, thanks so much. It was, it was good getting to know you a little more, and we look forward to spending many a night. Um, under twilight, seven to midnight with Brad, maybe. I just want to say that I'm, I'm just happy to be here and that I hope I can step up and execute and become a valuable member of the Edge team. New boy? No, I'm not new boy. I'm no longer new girl. It's great. Bye. Bye, Thank, thank kids. you, kids. Okay, thank you. Natalie Merchant found success as a solo performer, but what happened to the rest of the 10,000 Maniacs? They got together with some old friends for a new start. You'll see them next on the scene. If you like what I'm wearing, you can buy it at Bonwit Teller. Check out Nickel City Scene online. Visit our website at www.acadia.com. Our email box is open. Welcome back. John Lombardo and Mary Ramsey spent four years touring as the folk duo John and Mary. John was a founding member of the 10,000 Maniacs but left the group in 1986. Mary sang back up and played the violin on the Maniacs' last two albums. You may have seen her on the Maniacs' Unplugged special on MTV last year. Today Mary is the new lead vocalist and John has returned to the 10,000 Maniacs. The video is from the John and Mary album Victory Gardens. The song you're going to see is Red Wooden Beads.
The 10,000 Maniacs are honored in the Buffalo Music Hall of Fame as the most successful group to come out of Western New York. They have a new record deal and a new album coming out in early 97. That's all the time we have for this week. Tune in next Saturday for more local talent. Write to us, send us your press kits, music videos, or just your thoughts on the show. The address is Nickel City Scene, Care of the Media Center, 2001 Main Street, Buffalo, New York, 14208. For Nickel City Scene, I'm Jackie Thern. Keep supporting local music, and I'll see you next week.